So to recap for anyone who's been living under a rock for the last week, uh, Intel have just launched their 8700K and the rest of their 8th generation CPUs, as well as the Z370 platform and chipset and all of the motherboards to go with it. Now I actually technically have the 8700K downstairs doing some more tests for some more videos that will be coming out very shortly, but in this video we're going to be taking a look at the 8700K versus the Ryzen 7 1800X. This is kind of the, the two top dogs of their platforms, having a bit of a showdown in both synthetic and real world gaming benchmarks, so we'll see how they do. So to set the scene a little bit, the Ryzen 7 chip is an 8 core 16 thread CPU and runs around about 3.6 gigahertz on all cores with a 4.1 gigahertz XFR boost on, on the single core anyway. When it comes to the 8700K, that one is actually a 6 core 12 thread chip with a 3.7 gigahertz base clock, but actually all core boost up to 4.7, which is kind of crazy. Now I was actually using air cooler, so I was using this Be Quiet one and a very similar Cooler Master one on the 8700K, and after a report that the 1800X was doing about sort of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, whereas, oh god, the uh, 8700K, that was running at 94 degrees Celsius. Yeah. 94. Um, so even though the, uh, the the benchmarks you see are very impressive for the 6 core comparing to an 8 core, do bear in mind that this is drinking way more power than the 1800X and putting out way more heat as well. So just bear that one in mind. Now with that said, the games and benchmarks we're going to be running here are Cinebench, Asus Realbench, 3D Mark, Fire Strike, 1080p. We're also going to be running Dirt Rally and GTA 5 all on 1080p, 4040p and 4K all on ultra or very high settings respectively and we're going to be running Player Unknown's Battlegrounds at 1080p as well. So without further ado, you've been here long enough, let's take a look at the performance results. Starting off with Cinebench, as you'd expect with the 8700K having a slightly higher clock speed, the single threaded performance is a little bit better. With that said, because the 1800X has those two extra cores and obviously four extra threads, you are looking at a higher overall multi-threaded score. Fairly similar on either end though. When it comes to Asus Robench, this is actually pretty interesting as Ryzen is better at encoding and OpenCL, whereas the 8700K is actually better at image editing and multitasking, which does seem to factor more heavily into the system score, hence the higher number. When it comes to 3D Mark Fire Strike, this one's also pretty interesting as it looks like the physics test mostly cares a lot more about clock speed than it does core counts as the 1800X is actually slower than the 8700K in the physics test and also slower for the overall score too. When it comes to the more gaming oriented benchmarks, as I've seen previously, the uh, Intel chips or the GTA 5 is definitely more favorable to the Intel chips. So especially 1080p and even 1440p, you're looking at a reasonable difference uh, and potentially a notable difference depending on what sort of settings you are playing at um, with the, the 8700K versus the 1800X. In Dirt Rally, this is actually kind of surprising. At 1080p, there's a pretty significant difference here, but as soon as you get to 1440p and 4K, it's almost identical between the two chips. So if you are playing at 1440p or 4K, then either of these are a fantastic shout. When it comes to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, this was basically neck and neck, with slightly higher minimums and maximums for the 8700K, but otherwise almost identical performance and really no visible difference for me anyway. Now what really surprised me here was actually that even though the uh, 8700K is is a six core chip. Thanks to that clock speed improvement over the Ryzen chip, obviously running at 4.7 gigahertz on all cores, you are seeing a significant performance improvement in both single threaded applications and in stuff like gaming results at 1080p. Now do bear in mind that if you're someone who plays 4040p or 4K with a 1080 or 1080 Ti, then realistically neither of these are gonna matter to you in terms of you know performance difference anyway. If you're playing at 1080p, then obviously the Intel chip is still, as was mentioned in the Ryzen reviews when they came out still the way to go although do bear in mind that if you actually compare these numbers to the 7700k at least for a similarly clocked 7700k you're actually going to see very similar if not better results from the older chip so just bear that one in mind now of course i do have to mention that this isn't the only task or these uh, you know these benchmarks aren't the only tasks that people do with these sorts of cpus so especially in stuff like video editing i still personally edit with a 1700x and very much enjoy it it's actually overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz and does a, a fantastic job and I'd likely, you know, I, I expect that a very you'd get very similar performance with a 1700X to an 8700K just due to the clock speed differences. I'd also mention that stuff like streaming and gaming is something that I'm going to be going to be covering in a full video in the coming weeks. Uh, that's what I'm currently testing downstairs. So um, if you uh, do want to see that, do hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below. But I think for me, this is going to be a very, very interesting one to see if the 8700K can actually considerably beat the 7700K in both streaming and gaming 
gaming results and if it can catch up to the Ryzen chips as well. So what's the conclusion here? Well, I think in terms of pricing anyway, these are going to be fairly similarly priced by the time you watch this video. I think even if you're taking a look at the 1700X, it performs almost identically to the 1800X. So I'm fairly happy to say that price point wise, these are uh, very, very similar. So for the price point, which is what we're kind of comparing essentially, the 8700K is uh, still the better shout for gaming if that's all you care about. Although, as I said, the 7700K actually might be an even better shout and you can probably pick it up for cheaper right now. So there's something to, to bear in mind. But if you are planning on stuff like streaming and gaming, you will have to wait and find out as I'm still testing that. But I suspect that either the Ryzen chip will be identical or slightly better than the A700K still in that regard. Um, but in stuff like content creation and if cores really matter, then the Ryzen chip is still a really good shout. What I'm most happy about though is that we have a lot of competition. The 8700K is a fantastic chip and despite its ridiculous heat output issues and the fact that it drinks power like a madman, it's still a fantastic chip and does a really good job of performing well as does the Ryzen chip. And having the option where you can basically pick one or the other and have very similar results, that's really good. So with that said, if you have any thoughts on this, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to have a, a chat with you about it. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. Feel free to hit that subscribe button if you do want to see some streaming results. And as I said, let me know in the comments down below as well. If you want to see anything else, feel free to check out the other videos that are over there. I will leave links to the Ryzen and the 8700K chips in the links in the description down below. So if you want to check those out and check out the pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at those links uh, down below. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and occasionally launch video basis, feel free to take a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. They do genuinely help me out and if you could use those that would be fantastic. There's also some other ways to support me down below and I'm thinking of a few other things so feel free to uh, check those out and otherwise that's pretty much it. Check out the other videos that are over there if you haven't already and uh, yeah we'll see you on the next one.